Imagine waking up tomorrow and your phone doesn't turn on. Your car won't start. Hospitals struggle to power critical machines. Fighter jets are grounded. And your favorite binge watch? It's just a black screen. Sounds like a scene from a dystopian movie, right? But it's not fiction. It's what our world would look like without rare earth minerals. These silent heroes tucked deep within the Earth's crust power everything from smartphones and EVs to satellites and missile systems. Yet most people have never even heard of neodymium or dysprosium. Here's the kicker. While they're called rare, they're not that rare. The real issue? Who controls them? And in a world racing toward green energy, space dominance, and digital everything, that control means power. Real power. So buckle up, because what you're about to learn could change the way you see technology, politics, and even your future. What exactly are rare earth minerals? Rare earth minerals sound like they belong in a Marvel movie, but in reality, they're a group of 17 metallic elements, including the 15 lanthanides plus scandium and yttrium. You won't find them sparkling in jewelry stores. Instead, you'll find them behind the scenes, powering your tech and driving global innovation. Here's the twist. Rare earths aren't rare in terms of quantity. In fact, many of them are more abundant than gold. But they're rarely found in high enough concentrations to be mined economically. They tend to be scattered across the Earth's crust, blended with other elements which makes extraction difficult, dirty, and expensive. Imagine trying to make chocolate chip cookies with just one chip per batch. The chocolate is there. You just have to bake hundreds of cookies to taste it. And that's why these elements are so tricky. They're crucial, but inconvenient. Why are they so important? Let's break it down. Without rare earths, your smartphone doesn't buzz. Your EV doesn't move. Your wind turbine doesn't spin. Your laptop doesn't process. And your flat screen doesn't shine. These elements are essential in over 200 high-tech applications, including Electric vehicle motors, neodymium and prosiodymium, create powerful magnets that make EVs lighter, faster, and more efficient. Wind turbines, rare earth magnets help convert wind into electricity efficiently. Defense tech, lasers, missile guidance systems, stealth tech, and fighter jets all depend on rare earths. Consumer electronics, from your AirPods to your smart fridge, these minerals are baked into modern life. It's like salt in cooking. You don't see it, but take it away and everything falls flat. And here's the kicker. Even if rare earths make up just 1% of a product's weight, that 1% might be the difference between functionality and failure. That's what makes them irreplaceable. Not their abundance, but their specificity. There's simply no plan B. Yet, who controls the supply? Now here's where things get political. In the early 1990s, the U.S. was one of the top producers of rare earths. But by the 2000s, China had taken over, producing over 90% of the world's supply. Today, that dominance remains largely unshaken, especially in the processing stage, where China controls 92% of output. Why does this matter? Because rare earths aren't just about tech, they're a geopolitical weapon. In trade wars and diplomatic standoffs, China has threatened to restrict exports of these materials. And considering that between 2020 and 2023, 70% of US rare earth imports came from China, that's a terrifying dependency. In other words, if tensions heat up, the West's clean energy future and military capabilities could hang by a thread, and China holds the scissors. That's why the US, Europe, and others are scrambling to develop new mines, invest in recycling, and build processing plants outside of China. But rebuilding this supply chain isn't easy or cheap. Rare earths and the energy transition. If the 20th century ran on oil, the 21st will run on rare earths. The global push toward clean energy, EVs, solar panels, and wind farms has caused demand for these minerals to skyrocket. Just think about it. A single Tesla Model 3 needs around one kilobus of neodymium-based magnets. A large offshore wind turbine might use up to 600 kilos of rare earths. Even LED lighting and energy-efficient appliances are packed with them. 
Without rare earths, the entire green revolution stalls. And it's not just about powering gadgets, it's about decarbonizing entire industries. From electric aircraft to smart grids, these minerals are the foundation of sustainable innovation. But here's the problem. Mining and processing rare earths is environmentally messy. The same materials needed to save the planet often pollute it during production. Which brings us to the next challenge, the environmental and ethical dilemma. Rare earth elements are powering the green revolution, but ironically, their extraction is often anything but green. The process is dirty, complex, and environmentally hazardous. To separate these minerals from the ore, companies frequently use strong acids, radioactive chemicals, and other toxic solvents. This produces massive amounts of hazardous waste, which, if mishandled, can leach into groundwater, pollute rivers, and devastate ecosystems. A prime example is China's Bayan Obo mine in Inner Mongolia, the world's largest source of rare earths. Nearby communities have reported blackened rivers, stifling air pollution, and rising health problems. Crops struggle to grow, livestock perish, entire towns bear the brunt of green technologies made dirty. But the environmental story isn't the only concern. There's a deeply troubling human cost, too. In several mining regions of Africa and Southeast Asia, rare earth extraction has been linked to child labor, exploitative conditions, and even armed conflict funding. In some cases, children as young as 10 are reportedly involved in hazardous mining activities with little or no safety gear. So here's the harsh paradox. We need rare earths to build clean technologies that fight climate change. But the way we get them right now, it can make things worse environmentally, socially, and ethically. The good news? Efforts are underway to fix this. Countries like the US, Japan, and Germany are investing in greener separation techniques and less toxic refining processes. There's also growing focus on recycling rare earths from old electronics, also called urban mining, which avoids traditional mining altogether. But transforming the industry won't be quick or easy. It requires global cooperation, robust regulation, and serious investment in sustainable tech. Until then, every rare earth-powered gadget comes with a hidden footprint, and it's one we can no longer afford to ignore. The investment and economic opportunity. From a financial perspective, rare earth elements are no longer just niche materials. They're fast becoming the backbone of the global tech economy. As demand for EVs, wind turbines, drones, smartphones, and military hardware skyrockets, so too does the value of these strategic resources. The International Energy Agency, IEA, projects that demand for rare earths could triple by 2030, driven largely by green energy transitions. That's an enormous opportunity for investors, especially as governments race to secure supply chains and lessen dependence on China, which currently dominates the rare earth market. This has already sparked a mini boom in rare earth stocks. Take MP Materials, a US-based company that runs the Mountain Pass mine in California. Since going public, its stock has seen dramatic gains. Similarly, Linus Rare Earths, the largest rare earth producer outside China, has become a darling of investors betting on supply diversification. What's fueling this surge? Not just market demand, but government backing. The U.S. Department of Energy and Department of Defense have offered grants and subsidies to expand domestic production. Australia and Canada are doing the same. These policy tailwinds make rare earth ventures especially attractive in an increasingly resource-conscious world. Private equity and venture capital firms are also eyeing next-generation recycling companies, green refining startups, and rare earth tech firms that offer less toxic alternatives. Bottom line, rare earths are quickly evolving from obscure materials into strategic financial assets. They represent a convergence of technology, policy, and profit, a rare trifecta in the investment world. For investors who can stomach volatility and are willing to play the long game, this sector offers not just returns, but a chance to be part of the next global industrial revolution. So, what's next? The global rare earths landscape is shifting fast, and the next decade could redefine who controls the technology economy. New players are emerging to challenge China's dominance. 
Countries like Vietnam, Greenland, and Brazil are ramping up exploration and mining efforts, aiming to become reliable suppliers to Europe and North America. Ukraine, despite its ongoing conflict, has caught the attention of Western nations due to its untapped mineral reserves, including rare earths. The U.S. has even signed preliminary agreements to help develop these resources post-war. Meanwhile, global alliances like the Mineral Security Partnership, formed by the U.S., EU, Japan, South Korea, and others, aim to secure non-Chinese supply chains by coordinating investment, development, and trade policies. But production alone won't solve the problem. We're also seeing a growing push for urban mining, extracting rare earths from e-waste, like old smartphones, laptops, and wind turbine parts. This recycling trend offers a more sustainable and scalable solution, especially as millions of tons of electronics end up in landfills each year. There's also excitement around synthetic or substitute materials. Scientists are researching alternatives to neodymium and dysprosium magnets, that could match their performance without the same geopolitical baggage. While these technologies are still experimental, the potential is massive. In short, the rare earth future will be multi-sourced, tech-driven, and geopolitically strategic. The winners? Those who adapt fastest by investing in innovation, building strong alliances, and putting ethics and sustainability front and center. Until then, rare earths will continue to be both a battleground and a bridge between nations, technologies, and the world we're all trying to build. So the next time you scroll on your phone, fire up your EV, or flip on a light switch, remember, behind that simple act is a complex web of politics, pollution, and precious elements hidden beneath our feet. Rare earths aren't just minerals. They're the beating heart of modern life. And as the world shifts to a cleaner, faster, and smarter future, these 17 elements could decide who leads that future. If you found this video eye-opening, hit that like button to support the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the next big story hiding in plain sight. Thanks for watching. And until next time, stay curious.